Ah, it just started raining again. Oh well, it's four o'clock anyway. That means... Welcome to another video here in the off grid garage. <laughs> Today I want to take care of this situation here, which is just not acceptable. I've got all the material here. I've got some Velcro strips here for the for the Raspi. And I would like to mount the Raspi here inside the cabinet now. And also have the USB power supply, which comes from my workbench over there somewhere. Uh, being supplied by the 50 volts we have here from the battery directly. Well, for this reason, I have bought I have bought this buck converter here. The input voltage is up to 60 volts, and with this trimmer here, we can adjust the output voltage from 1 to 35 volts or something. Ah, too much speculation. So it is a step down buck converter, adjustable 6.5 to 60 volt input and 1.25 to 30 volt output, 10 amps it can handle. So $5.14. <laughs> I think this was even including, oh no, there was an eight cent shipping cost on top of it. Damn it. Link down in the description if you're interested in these sort of things. So that means we can, so we can connect our battery here with uh, 55 volts. And then we adjust this little podi here to have exactly 5 volts output on the other side and connect this to our Raspberry Pi. And I've got here a micro USB connector, which I just cut off from the other end. And the, well, the pink one is our positive and the white one is the negative. Um, I thought about getting a little case or something, a little box, a little enclosure for this one. But then I saw something online which said, well, this is a fantastic idea. I'll show you. And what we can do is we just take this heat shrink and put the electronic inside. So we can see the lights. I don't know if there are actually lights on there. So like this. And then we cut it off here, connect our cables and then shrink it just a little bit. And if we need to adjust the voltage, we can just um, poke a little hole inside the heat shrink and can get in with our screwdriver and adjust the voltage a little bit. And it's fully isolated. Yeah, I saw this online and thought this is a great idea. So before we connect it to our battery, we want to test this, of course, and adjust the voltage accordingly. Okay, let's start with the lower voltage in positive this is this side and negative on this side ah we've got a blue light there it is okay we now have 12.5 volts that's a bit too much for our raspi so i'm just turning this trimmer here anti-clockwise until we go to 5 volts All right, so we've got exactly five volts. Okay, we can now measure the five volt output we have just adjusted. And now I'm turning up the voltage and see if this one actually moves if until we reach the 55 volts. There we go, 60 volts. Well, if this is true or not, I don't know. One milliamp, this would be the self-consumption of the electronic, of the buck converter. All right, that seems to work fine. Let's do a quick first test with our USB connection here. I've got my tablet here. This is the uh, charging status app I'm using. And you can see here in the top bar, this is our charging current, which is currently minus 311 milliamps. So and I'm plugging in our micro USB now to the tablet and hopefully it just starts charging. Oh yeah, 839 plus 900, one amp we are getting. That's very good. 
and up here we can also see we are pulling now 130 140 milliamps 140 milliamps at 58 volts and interestingly the lower I go with the voltage the higher the current goes makes sense right to deliver the same power okay so that seems to work just fine okay so the electronic can deliver up to 10 amps which is very sufficient for our raspy well these cheap Chinese terminals are so narrow I cannot get my cable in there I usually don't solder these ring terminals, but with these small ones I've got the feeling the mechanical strength is not the best between the ring lug and the cable. So I just put a little bit of solder on the on the tip of the cable to secure it a little bit more. That was a bit too hot, huh? Oh, still okay. Let's check the polarity again before we connect it to the actual battery. Okay, light is on. Yep, yeah, starts charging. 900 milliamps. Perfect. Well, I should have put a piece of cardboard behind it here so the actual solder pins are not coming through. I mean they are not coming through but there is a certain risk that they will come through. There's, there's a piece of velcro underneath so it doesn't really touch any metals or something. But just from a safety perspective a little bit of cardboard would have prevented that. Well, When I saw this online they didn't show the other side. <laughs> So next time. Okay, and then we've got our power supply for the Raspberry Pi ready. So I still cannot find any option here in the settings of the Raspi to shut it down probably. And I really don't want to pull just the power cable, you know. That's that could corrupt the SD card and then it doesn't work anymore. And we have to start from scratch. So there's nothing here under general, there's only a reboot. So this is what I'm using to actually shut down the Raspi. I click on reboot and when the light turns off I unplug the power cable. This is pretty much as good as it gets. Okay, let's do restart, rebooting, power light is off, bang. Okay, so we unplug all the USBs. It doesn't matter in which order you plug them in again. And now I've got these velcro strips here. Glue them here on the back. Oh, they are sticky. And the other one down here. We've got the counterparts. I guess I should plug one in. So I've got the length, uh, probably up here, so we can still see the light and can have access to the SD card here. Well, I always can just take it off because of the velcro strips at the back, so it's not really super, if I make this a little bit straight, not really super important. And then we've got the power cable sticking down and well, this little device sits down here. So, roughly like this. Yep, that should work. Okay, let's put it here. We can still unplug them, we can go a little bit further. Okay, let's do it here.
Okay. There we go. It's on. Now this, yes, it works. I'm just putting another of these Velcro strips here on the bottom of our power supply, the buck converter, and then the other part goes on the wall. Just underneath. Let's see if I can get this straight. There we go. All right. Okay, power supply is in. Okay, yeah, the little spark was expected actually when you connect a buck converter, the capacitors charge when you connect it to a power supply. That's just normal. Okay, and we now have a blue light here. I have unplugged the raspy though because I didn't want to have any complications just in case there's an in rush or something and we get a surge on the plus 5 volt. But this should be all fine. And I plug in the like in the, um, oh, down here is it? All right, we've got a light. <coughs> there, we should have a green light there to boot up, hopefully very soon. There it comes. It's yellowish. So it's now booting up. Okay, now it has finished booting. We should be able to reconnect. Let's see if it's already on the Wi-Fi and online. Not quite. Okay, it is now back, but it doesn't show us any details at all because none of the USB cables for our devices is plugged in at the moment. I have to organize these cables a little bit here inside. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, so here comes the big moment. I will plug in the first USB cables again. And hopefully, this is the smart shunt. Down there, let's see if this one comes up automatically. Or do I have to refresh? Mm. Ah, there it is. Nice. And here's something else. I don't know. <laughs> let's see which number comes up. That could be nothing so far. Ah, one of the solar charge controllers. And here comes the next one. If nothing happens, that's the second solar charge controller then. And the last one should be our inverter. Okay, plugged in. There's the inverter with zero watts, of course. Okay, and here is our setup. Power supply from 55 volts down to 5 volts. Powers our Raspberry Pi with the OS. What's the name of the OS? I've forgotten. And then we've plugged in our four USB devices here. So two solar charge controllers, the inverter, and this cable still goes down here to the smart shunt. Um, I'm not pulling this one through it uh, through a clamp or something here at the moment because I'm sure we will change this whole situation here again. I believe once we build the second battery, we've got the battery rack sitting here. Uh, the smart shunt actually will be here inside the cabinet right next to the bus bars. And then we will have only one little cable going from the smart shunt all the way down to the battery positive to measure our voltage directly at the battery 
but the smart shunt itself will be in here I believe at the moment maybe that's wrong maybe the smart shunt will go in the rack as well I don't know yet that's why I leave this one as it is at the moment yeah and this situation as well does anyone know a 48 volt fuse block I cannot find one online I looked at Plusy's but they have only 32 volts. I think the problem is not the actual fuse block, but it's more like the fuse itself because the two, see these two metal supports left and right, and then the fuse wire in the middle. I think these two supports are too close together for 48 volts. If you have a really high short current, there could be an arc in between this fuse here and it could start a fire. The possibility is there. I don't think it's very likely, but it is possible. So at the moment, I leave this all as it is. This gets a bit messy here. All right, and the cables I have just put together with some Velcro here as well, because I don't know what the final situation installation will be, but this is good enough at the moment. All right, so the next step we want to test here is we want to go in our settings and system setup. Oh no, that's not the right one then. Um, probably it's in here. Energy meters, Ethernet, Wi Fi. There, I just want to go in Wi Fi. Okay, connected. Well, we can see the Wi-Fi signal up there, actually. So we are now at signal strength, 92%. And I'm going to close the enclosure. I just want to make sure this one is not... Oh, this is not good here. Close the enclosure for a moment here and see if the signal strength actually goes down. It doesn't. Do a refresh of the website. Not still at 92%. Well, the Raspi sits behind. The Raspi sits behind here, and the Wi-Fi is up there behind this metal beam. So this is one and a half meters, roughly. It doesn't. I I never had. I also never had any trouble with the Bluetooth connecting to the solar charge controllers or the inverter inside from the mobile phone. Even the enclosure is closed. No problem at all. All right, I think this concludes our further improvement of the situation here. I finally can get rid of this cable here going through my going over my workbench. This is all installed in here. So the Raspi gets actually a bit hand warm now, which is normal. Um, probably in summertime I'll take the side panels off at the top and at the bottom here as well. So we've got a nice um, air, circu air circulation through the Raspberry Pi and I have also ordered some ordered some here we go. I have also ordered some um, heat sinks which we can stick on top of the processor and also on top of the um, something else. Ah, I think this is this one there. There's another IC which needs a bit of cooling, but this is not this is not hot or something. It's just the whole enclosure heats up, but we can just push out these white panels here, top and bottom, and then we've got nice air circulation in there. But we wait until summer and see how it goes for the moment we leave it as it is here nice very happy with that all right boys and girls as always thank you so much for watching thanks for all your support stay charged and safe and we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon i'm hurry up a little bit because the battery symbol is flashing for the last five minutes it will shut down every I just recharged the battery here, just a tiny, tiny bit. As always, thanks for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>